Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett from Life on This Planet blog coming at you with my latest installment of Friday on the Turntable. If you missed last week's, I uh, took a look at Psychedelic Furs um, Mirror Moves, so be sure to check that out if you missed it. So today, um, we're going to be talking about uh, an album that just came out just about a month and a half ago, almost two months ago, and that is uh, Dead Can Dance. Anastasis, or as my Chicago voice wants to kick in and say Anastasis, but it's Anastasis, Greek word for resurrection, which makes sense since this is Dead Can Dance's first album since 1996's Spirit Chaser. And it's also their first album not on the 4AD label, which they, um, they were on all the way from their debut from 1984. So this one's on Play It Again, Sam Records. Came out on August 14th in the, um, in the US. Uh, the vinyl version that I have here is just a beautiful gatefold package here with the, the sunflowers on the cover. Has the uh, lyrics and the credits in the inside and uh, you see the reverse of it right here. Now from the first two notes of this album, you just immediately know that it's Dead Can Dance, although they've not been with us for the last 16 years on, uh, with, without, any, without any new music. You just immediately know it from the first two notes of the first track, Children of the Sun, just so distinct. Um, and this is their eighth, eighth album. Now if you're unfamiliar with Dead Can Dance, they started out in 1981, Melbourne, Australia, and then shortly after that they relocated to the UK, um, signed to 4AD, and they put out their first self-titled album in um, in 1984. Their uh, original drummer was a guy named Peter Ulrich, who um, I kind of have a connection with because uh, my band Audra and his so first solo album were put out on the same record label. This is his album, it's called Pathways and Dawns. Um, there's a great track on here, here called Takaru. Takahuru's leaving, um, and uh, Peter is a uh, excellent, excellent drummer, and he played on the first uh, first two releases, I believe, which I'll show you one of them um, here towards the end of the video. Um, so the sound of Dead Can Dance, for those that don't know, that don't know, their first album started off kind of um, really almost, now I wouldn't say traditional rock because it was far from it, but really a dark, more of more of a rock band setting. Um, pretty much exclusively Brendan Perry on vocals and um, kind of that early 80s kind of goth rock sound and then shortly after that the sound just kept evolving added elements of world music and percussion and dulcimer and uh, Celtic music and it's always featured kind of after that kind of the back and forth vocals of the two you know founding members Brennan Perry and Lisa Gerard and this album is is no exception there's eight tracks on it and they alternate between songs pretty much um, so they each get four tracks so you get that nice deep rich um, vocals of Brennan Perry's and then that soaring sometimes wordless um, pseudo operatic vocals of Lisa Gerard um, and um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, let me show you the records. So the vinyl comes in these nice uh, black sleeves and it is a two LP set. So there's two, two tracks, eight tracks total, two tracks on each side. So, uh, and, and look at this clear vinyl here. That's side B. And what's really cool is you see the labels there. That one's green and that one and the A and the B side or the A side is that purple. And I don't think you can probably see it, but the, the way to indic the indications for the A, B, C, D sides is they're etched, like scratched right into that label, which I thought was kind of cool. But yeah, beautiful. I mean, why buy the CD when you can get that? Look how nice that is. Or why buy the download? I should say when you can get when you can get that. So yeah, two LP set, uh, clear clear vinyl. Um, my favorite track on this one is uh, Opium. Uh, excellent, excellent. Now, um, it's kind of a story about uh, depression, addiction, and um, and getting trapped in that. And Brendan Perry just in a uh, in a recent um, uh, interview or um, 
some discourse from him said that it's kind of about you know being you know not knowing which road to choose because all of them lead to nowhere so i thought that was pretty pretty intense and that's the track opium and that if you go to their website you know just google dead can dance you um they have that one up as a free download i think you just exchange your email address and you can get that so if you if you if you're really unfamiliar dead can dance this album is really as good of a place to start as, as any of them. Um, so what I would do is yeah, head over there, download that song, and, and then go from there. I think you'll really be blown away by it. The sound of this album is just, sorry, my cats are like flying around right now. They always do this when the, when the camera's rolling. So, uh, sorry, well. <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, the sound of this album is just massive. The percussion is just, my speakers were just just really just massive. Um, another great track is the opening, Children of the Sun. Like I said, the first two notes, you know it's Dead Can Dance. And um, it, it's really one of Brennan Perry's uh, best vocal performances ever. Uh, just really, really killer. And on that track, Opium, every time I hear it, there's this little instrument, instrumental motif that kind of starts the song and kind of kind of revisits through it. <laughs> I know this is going to sound totally ridiculous, but uh, if any of you guys ever remember playing uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out on Nintendo, there's this on Nintendo NES. There's this scene where um, there's a training sequence where um, where the character is like training and he's running he's running down the street with his trainer. And I don't know why, but the theme from Opium reminds me of that scene. I don't know if if the music is very similar to it, but I'll have to. Uh, uh, pull out uh, Mike Tyson's punch out and and check for that and then uh, I'd say my third favorite track is Return of the She King which which features Lisa Gerard on vocals which is um, which is really excellent and it was recorded the album was recorded in um, in Brendan Perry's uh, studio which is in a converted church in the middle of um, in the middle of Ireland where he lives so um, and and they're currently doing a massive world tour and they said that once that tour is over, there's plans for them to, to release something else. So, so it, we shouldn't have another 16 year wait between albums. It sounds like things are rolling and, uh, and they're really happy to be producing music again. Um, I've been into this band for, a for over 20 years and um, uh, sp their last one, Spirit Chasers, I found to be a bit disappointing. So when this, uh, when when I heard this, I was really blown away by it. So let me show you a few other things that I have of theirs um, that uh, I think, a couple other uh, albums that I have on vinyl that I think you guys will uh, would, would like to see. Um, this one here is kind of a really hard one to find. It's the Garden of the Arcane, Delight, Arcane Delights. And this came out, I think it was in 84 also, and it was, it was a four. It's a four-song EP that um, kind of was a segue into that more of the rock-based sound into uh, into their next album, which which I'll show you here in a second. But um, yeah, look at that nice white label there on 4AD. Yeah, four song, and I believe Peter Olick plays on this one. Uh, I'd have to look that up, but I'm but I'm almost positive that he does. So that's the uh, Garden of Arcane Delights, and then um, this is a reissue that came out a few years back. This is Spleen and Ideal. So this one is a really dark, just really it's you know it's it's an intense it's an intense listen. Um, this is a really cool cool package. Um, this reissue, 180 gram vinyl. You see that gold sleeve, and then uh, you see the label there really nice um, let's see what else here then oh behind me I have uh, from 1987 this is a OG press on 4AD of um, of um, within the realm <laughs> within the realm of a dying sun I know that very well and for some reason that just slipped my mind right there it's in a plain gray, gray sleeve there, and there you see the label for that one. This is excellent. I mean, the cart, the artwork on that one is uh, is really great. And uh, I think that's it for showing you my some of the ones I wanted to show you on vinyl. Still look, keeping my eye out for the other ones. I just came across a copy of uh, 
their debut today and it was overpriced and it was warped and uh, I don't have one of those nice vinyl flats like uh, like Blake does and showed in his one video if you guys uh, be sure to check that out YouTube uh, vinyl flat which is this machine that heats up and flattens your records that are warped which I need to definitely invest in that oh one other thing I wanted to mention about Dead Can Dance uh, a few years back, when did this come out? In 2007, there was a Stephen King adaptation of one of his short stories uh, called The Mist. And um, a really intense story about people that are uh, trapped in this grocery store in this small town as this fog comes in and there's all these like creatures in it. And uh, when people get out of this, you know, they try to escape their you know, taken by these by these uh, strange creatures that are um, uh, made by a government governmental uh, chemical malfunction and uh, wreaks havoc and kills people. All this stuff. Anyways, there's no music in the movie whatsoever. It's very dark, very depressing. It's very serious. It's not it's not a, a silly you know comedy horror movie or anything. It's very serious. And at the very end, when this big climactic scene happens, the only song that, that played is a Dead Can, Dead Can Dance song. Um, and it's the, one of the tracks from uh, The Serpent's Egg. I think it's Enigma and Absolute. I could be wrong on the title. I can't, I can't remember. Some of their titles are really hard to remember. But uh, if, I'm, if I'm incorrect about that, I apologize. I'll, uh, someone will correct me, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, that's Stephen King's The Mist. It's worth seeing it just for that scene uh, with with uh, with that song in there. It is just incredible and um, just it gives you goosebumps and it's just phenomenal. So, anyways, uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Um, this, like I said, Anastasis, the new Dead Can Dance album, in a store near you. No. All right, guys. Uh, I'll be back uh, probably tomorrow, day after, if, if the very latest, the day after, with um, my weekly playlist and some uh, and a vinyl update. So, uh, guys, have a good weekend. Talk to you soon.